Wow, it's exciting to be here in a room full of inspired speakers and people to be inspired. So I'm going to work on that. Um, when we think about climate change, generally, this is what we're told to think about. Polar bears, frogs, ecosystems that are collapsing. And you know what? You guys don't care about polar bears. You think you do. But you don't, because you're told that polar bears are dying, and then you go, and, you, and when I say you, I'm talking about humanity, not just you individuals in the room. But we, we think about polar bears, we feel sad for a bit, and then we go and we travel down to Costa Rica, and we go in our SUVs, and we drive around, and we just continue on with our lives. And the problem is, is that we think we care about the environment, but really what we care about is humanity. And even so, we don't even really give a crap about most of humanity. Because, you know, people can die in Bangladesh, and we also shed a tear, and then we move on with our lives. But what we really care about is us. We care about ourselves, and we care about our loved ones. And so, what I want to tell you is that climate change is about you. And the way it's related to you is through health. In 2009, the Lancet, one of the world's leading medical journals, said that climate change was the number one threat to public health in the 21st century. So I'm going to walk through some of those threats. And I want you to understand why it matters to you. So we always think about vectors. And a vector is a, you know, an insect species that's growing because of the change in the weather. So malaria, dengue fever, and even Zika virus have been related. Their spread has been related to climate change issues. You're pretty safe from that. But there is Lyme disease coming. And it is being transferred in ticks that are spreading their, 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 their uh, um, area, geographical distribution. And so that, at some point, may be an issue. But this is actually first because I think it's the least of your worries. So we're also pretty lucky in Alberta in that we have no oceans. So when I show you this picture and tell you that the Great Barrier Reef is dying right now, you can say, well, that's OK. We're just surrounded by mountains and prairie. So the oceans are dying for two reasons. They're dying from thermal effects. I mean, think about it right now. The Great Barrier Reef, as we speak, is, is, is dying because of coral bleaching. Take a moment and just feel sad, and then we'll move on. It's also causing chemical effects because the ocean acidification, as the CO2 absorbs into the water, it produces uh, uh, acid. And, and anything that makes a calcium shell, so any crab, any mollusk, any uh, gastropod, they're not being able to get through their early stages of life and grow. And our oceans are dying. And our oceans are filled with protein that we're using as humanity to feed us. So this is going to be a big issue even though we're in a landlocked Alberta. We also don't have to worry about sea level rise, because we know the sea levels are rising from the melting of the ice. But once again, we're protected. Or are we? The biggest, uh, the, the most important city to be affected by this is New York City. It has 8.5 million people in it. Florida is going to be massively impacted, 20 million people. And in Canada, we have Vancouver that's going to be the most affected with umpteen million people. And they're all going to have to move. And I bet you some of them are going to be moving here. And that's going to create refugees and internally displaced people. And I tell you that these people do not have good health. They don't have primary care. They don't have access to good uh, uh, emergency room care. And of course, they're living. Oh. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, and they're not going to have access to, um, to uh, and they're, they're stuffed in this, in this space where they're just not going to have good health. And so this is a big issue. Fires. Have you guys been paying attention to what's happening in California today? It's pretty scary. And people tell me that we're protected in Alberta. Well, guess what? Fort McMurray, 2015. Slave Lake Fire, 2011. How about Waterton, 2017? We are not protected. And I would argue that these massive fires are symptoms of major ecosystem collapse. Our boreal forest and our uh, aspen parklands and our, and our eastern slopes of the Rockies are not designed to deal with the temperatures and the low humidity that they've been exposed to over the last few years. And this is what happens. And it causes internally displaced people. We've already talked about the health of that. I was an internally displaced person in the flood of 2013. 
I live in the town of Hiller, or in the community of Hillers, which is right down in the river valley. I was lucky that our house didn't actually get flooded, but we were evacuated and I had to live in somebody's basement for seven days. These flooding events are kind of paradoxical because we think of climate change as just being hot and drought. But what happens is the atmosphere can actually absorb more water than normal because of just simple chemistry, simple physics. And these rain bombs come down and they just destroy places like Calgary in 2013 or Houston in 2017. How do you adapt to four feet of water in four days? You can't do it. And it causes internally displaced people. Now here's where it really gets scary. And speaking to uh, Dustin's point about food, I'm worried about food security. I have a friend who's really smart. He's a PhD in economics. And we were driving up to Edmonton for uh, an event recently. And he said, Joe, um, we're going to be fine. We have a longer growing season. Except it's not just about the longer growing season. We have to have consistent weather. We have to have nice wet springs, nice warm Julys, and then a dry August and September in order to get through that. So I'm really worried about this. And then, of course, all of this leads to mental health effects. We grieve what we're about to lose. We pre-grieve because we know that the things that we love we're going to lose. And we also get anxious because this is a stressor that we have no way of adapting to. OK, that's the lowest part of the talk. Now I'm going to bring you up, although I'm, I have 18 seconds left, so I'm going to go fast. <laughs> um, so Lancet, that same journal, said that in 2015, the tackling climate change is the number one public health opportunity of the 21st century. Because as we get rid of fossil fuels, we get rid of all the pollutants. We get rid of the air pollution that I know very well from my work on coal. We get rid of um, uh, damage to landscapes like this oil spill in Saskatchewan River in, uh, last year. Um, and, and the ecosystem impacts of, of, of mining and fossil fuel development. And then we become prosumers. We get to actually produce the energy that we could consume, the democratization of our system. And if you think it's important for Alberta, imagine what it's like for somebody in India or China when they can actually, or Africa, where they can leapfrog the centralized generation system that we have, uh, that, they, that we have. They can just go straight to distributed energy. This is exciting stuff. And we should be excited about this because the future is bright and we can be a part of it. But I want you to remember why this is important. This is about them. This is about me. And this is about you. And you have to fight like your life depends on it. Fight like their life depends on it. And let's save the world.